this video, we're going to have a look at some of the MIDI options we have with LFO tool. So first of all, in Logic, I'm going to set up LFO tool so we can actually control the LFO graphs that we choose using our MIDI keyboard. So first of all, I'm just going to bypass the LFO tool, which is sitting on our baseline. And what I need to do is make a new software instrument track. And from the instrument menu, I'm going to go down to AU MIDI controlled effects. I'm going to choose LFO tool. Now this means we can control LFO tool using our MIDI keyboard. What we can basically do is use our MIDI notes from our MIDI keyboard to determine which LFO shape is going to affect the different parameters within the LFO routing section. Okay, so what we have to do is under the sidechain menu, choose the audio track for our baseline. And next, I'm going to bypass or mute, I should say, the baseline channel so we don't hear it twice. So now the baseline is actually coming through this LFO tool channel. So we have the volume being affected by the LFO shape. I'm just going to switch that off and I'm going to apply the cutoff like so and bring up some resonance and some drive. So we're going to make this really, really an audible. Okay, so in our first shape, I'll leave that as it is. The second one, let's choose something different. Third one, choose a different one again. And same for the fourth one. Now, I'll also change some of the speeds of these as well. Just so we can really hear the difference. Okay, so what we can basically do is use our MIDI keyboard to change these numbers. So we're going to basically be routing different shapes to the filter cutoff. Now it's the first five octaves of the MIDI keyboard from the bottom, so the lowest five octaves that are going to do this. So you'll see as I press my MIDI keyboard, C minus two, C sharp minus two, and so on, it's changing this number. So let's do it in practice. Sounds dreadful, but you get the idea. That's how you can control it. The next octave up, we're then going to affect the resonance. The octave up from that, the volume, and so on and so forth. So in that way, you can kind of play LFO tool, tool live and create different shapes that you can then play using the MIDI keyboard. Very cool. Okay, let's have a look at altering LFO playback by MIDI notes. So what I've just added here is a little arpeggiated pattern. using the ARP in Logic and Massive. So I'll make a new track, Software Instrument Track. And then from here, I'm going to choose AU MIDI Control Effects, add a photo, Stereo. Okay, so now, same as before, I need to route the sound through. Now in Logic, this version of Logic, the latest version, you can sidechain and instrument track if you've got a previous version of logic you'll need to bust that and place the bus in the sidechain option but the latest version of logic allows you to do this if you're using another daw then refer to instructions for your own dnw and how to set up a midi controlled effect okay so what we can do now is use these options down here to control some of the parameters of lfo tool so let's start with note retrigger before we actually get cracking, let's put a no output on the actual track that we were using for the arpeggiated sound, because otherwise we're going to hear it twice. So now we can hear that it's just playing through LFO tool. Now if I switch this on here, this is going to allow me to re-trigger LFO tool whenever I press a note. Okay, let's put this onto the filter cutoff. Let's 
So basically, whenever I press a note, we're going to re-trigger LFO Tools Envelope. Could try a different shape. Now there's two different modes for this. We can have it in this mode with this musical note highlighted, or if we click again, it becomes an envelope. Now this makes LFO tool really just like an envelope because the LFO will actually stop at the end of the cycle rather than looping round. So it's really fun to play to come up with kind of interesting patterns. Okay, so the next one is note gate. So this basically halts the LFO cycle when a note off message is received. So in other words, you can hold down a key and basically bring in LFO tool. And what's cool, we can actually use these in conjunction. So let's say we wanted to have the note gate and the note we trigger together. Okay, so the next one is the velocity of the notes routed to affect the pulse width of the LFO cycle. So I don't really know how much you're going to use this one, but this is what it does. So if we actually drew in some notes that had different velocities and were a little bit more rhythmic about it, then that may be able to create some interesting effects. Okay, so next up we have the note to the LFO rate. Let's just reset the pulse width there. Now this is going to speed up and slow down the LFO depending on what pitch you play. Pretty cool, so it allows you to play LFO in a kind of rhythmic way again. Okay, so finally, we have the note to cut off. Now, let's just put this back so we're not doing any actual LFO modulation. Let's just use a static cutoff like so. Let's 
add a bit of resonance in there. So this allows you to play the cutoff with the keyboard. Now, once again, if we were to actually do this with a little bit more care and attention using a MIDI region, I'm sure we can come up with some interesting effects. So let's put it 16th. Now I'm going to use shift and option just move these by octaves do it randomly I have no idea what this is going to sound like but that's what happy accidents are all about Okay, so it's quite interesting. Now we could bring this in with some actual traditional LFO shape modulation of the cutoff as well. So you can create some quite interesting rhythms that way. So lots to experiment with there and great ways to allow you to even introduce more playability and groove into LFO tool. Okay, so finally for this section, let's have a look at using LFO tool as a MIDI effect. Let's make a new software instrument track. And in the MIDI effects section, we're going to choose LFO tool. Now, this now comes up as a MIDI effect, let's bring in Massive again. So the way we can do this using LFO tool or Massive is just bring up the CC amount here. Now this is going to basically start sending out MIDI information from here. Now if we right click onto this macro control here and click MIDI Learn, Massive is going to basically work out that LFO tool is sending out CC information from there. Now, if we send this the parameters on massive, let's say the filter, which is going to bring up the sustain level. And we bring up our amount here. We now have a way of having a photo sending modulation information to massive now of course there's nothing stopping us using our options here again so i need to actually be playing logic in order to do this so we can basically play the notes in massive and also start the phase of the lfo at the same time <laughs> We have a depth control here and then we also have bass which is basically the starting point. Ok 
Okay, so let's just change the shape a little bit. And let's route these this to some other parameters. So let's put a reverb on here. Okay, so this way we can use LFO tools parameters here, but also be able to play them at the same time as we play notes in the synthesizer and also route the modulation to different sources within the synthesizer to create some interesting effects. Really fun to play with and definitely one that's worth investigating. Okay, so now we've had a look at using LFO tool as a MIDI effect. I'm going to give you some tips on how to use LFO in a mixing context. <laughs> 